let us have a look at the difference between the two major lymphocytes in our immune response, which are B cells and T cells. Although both of these lymphocytes might look similar if let's say they are observed under the light microscope, there are differences among these two cells in terms of the proteins or the receptor that they form on the surface of their cell membrane, their maturation site, their function, and also in which part of the limb organ they will reside at after they undergo maturation. Based on this table, we know that the B cells mature in bone marrow. However, for T cells, mature in the thymus glands. If let's say B cells encountered an antigen, what they will do? Basically, B cells will bind to the antigen by using the B cell receptor found on their surface of membrane. They will be activated. For B cells to be activated, it needs the help of a particular T cell called the T helper cells. What happens after the B cells is activated? They will undergo differentiation and clonal selection into two groups of cells, which are plasma cell and memory B cell. Plasma cell is the one that going to secrete antibodies. What will antibodies do? They will bind to the antigen and neutralize them. Or either they will mark the antigen and will call up other leukocytes such as macrophage, which finally will destroy the pathogen. This is in difference with T cells. T cells is not going to secrete antibody. Instead, they will attack the cells infected with the pathogen. The action might be similar with NK cells that we learn in the innate immune response. However, the difference is just that the T cells need to recognize, identify and undergo activation before they are able to attack the infected cells. For B cells, they are the ones that are going to mark the antibody, antibody mediated immunity and T cells are the ones that are going to mount the cell mediated immunity. There are two types of T cells, which are T cytotoxic T cells, which is the one that are going to destroy the cells infected with pathogen, and T helper cells that are going to activate B cells in antibody mediated immunity and T cytotoxic cells in cell mediated immunity. How does helper T cells activate both of these cells? They secrete the cytokines. Okay, shown here is the figure of the development and maturation of both lymphocytes, which are B cells and T cells. We know that the both of lymphocyte B cells and T cells are produced from the stem cells in the bone marrow. It's just that for the B cell, B cell will maintain their maturation in the bone marrow. However, for T cell, it will move from the bone marrow towards the thymus gland for maturation. What happens upon maturation? Both of the lymphocytes will develop a particular protein on the surface of the cell membrane, which is known as the antigen receptor. For B cells, the antigen receptor is known as B cell receptor and for the T cell, the antigen receptor will be known as T cell receptor. What is the function of this receptor? It will recognize and bind to particular antigen that can be found on the surface of pathogen on the surface of the cell membrane of the pathogen. Okay, it's just that for a B cell receptor, it will bind to antigen that are circulating in blood or lymph. So this in this is different with the antigen receptor or the T cell receptor. It will bind to the antigen that is presented. Presented by a molecule called MHC, major histocompatibility complex that we are going to learn later. Let us have a look at the structure and function of T cell receptor, TCR, and B cell receptor. The receptor is actually a protein that is bounded to the membrane of both T cell and B cell respectively. 
What is TCR? So TCR or T cell receptor, it binds to antigen fragment from the pathogen that is displayed or presented on the surface of the whole cells. How do they are represented on the surface of the whole cells? By a protein called major histocompatibility complex or HMC. So basically what happens to the whole cell? So we look at this diagram. Let's say this is the whole cells, our body cells. So the whole cells has been infected by a pathogen such as bacteria or maybe virus. So it infect the whole cells. So the cell has been said to be infected. What happened inside is the pathogen will be digested with the enzyme from the whole cells. So it will be digested into a smaller peptide, a smaller molecule called the antigen fragment. And the antigen fragment inside the whole cells, it will bind to the protein synthesized by the whole cell called major histocompatibility complex, MHC. So it binds with the antigen. And uh, the complex will be presented on the surface. So this is actually the presentation, antigen presentation. Once the antigen is presented and displayed on the surface of this whole cell, the T cell receptor, this T cell receptor from the T cell will recognize and bind to them. Okay, so this is for T cell receptor. It needs to bind to the antigen that is being displayed on the surface of the whole cells. It needs to be displayed after it binds to MHC. How about B cell receptor? Okay, B cell receptor from B cell we bind to antigenic determinant. Okay, so antigenic determinant is a, a, a site that can be found on antigen. Okay, ah, so it's a binding site of antigen to the B cell receptor of intact antigen or pathogen that are secreting free in body fluid. The body fluid can be blood or lymph. Okay, so this is a B cell and this is the B cell receptor. Ah, this is the B cell receptor. So the B cell receptor will identify and bind to the antigen on the surface of the pathogen that are circulating free in our body fluid. So this is the pathogen, which is the bacteria. And these are the antigen on the surface of the bacteria. And the B cell receptor will bind directly to the antigen on the surface of the pathogen which are circulating free in the body fluid. So by now you should know the difference between the T cell receptor and B cell receptor. How do they want to bind to the antigen? Okay, shown here is the structure of T cell receptor and B cell receptor. Let us have a look at the structure of the B cell receptor first, okay? So this is a B cell receptor. If we have a look at it, the B cell receptor basically consists of four polypeptide chain. One, two, three, four. For B cell receptor, it consists of two heavy chains, two heavy chains here. We can see they are longer than the other two polypeptide chains, which are light chain. Okay, two light chains and two heavy chains. Okay, so it looks like a Y shape here. Uh, the chains, the light chains and heavy chains are bonded together by disulfide bridge or disulfide bond. So these are the disulfide bond, disulfide bridge. Okay, so uh, the light chain and heavy chain consists of two regions. V, V is variable region and C, C is constant region. The variable region here has a shape Okay, or a binding site called the antigen binding site. Okay, the antigen binding site, meaning here they are going to bind to the antigen. Okay, so they will bind to the antigen, specific antigen. The concept is like a lock and key. Okay, all right. So this is the structure of B cells, and we can see uh, these are the B cell receptor. So shown here is about six. B cell receptor, but in reality, 
the B cells and the T cells can have about 100,000 of the receptors on the surface of their cell membrane, which is specific to so particular antigen. Okay, so uh, we go back to the structure of the B cell receptor. So the heavy change, ha heavy chains consists of two regions here, transmembrane region and a very short tail. The short tail, the short tail of the heavy chains, are uh, span through the cytoplasm of the B cells, while the transmembrane region, uh, we can see that they are span only at to the cell membrane of the B cell. Okay, so this is for the B cell receptor. They will bind to antigen on the surface of the pathogen that are circulating free in the blood and limb. Okay, now let's have, let us have a look at the structure of the T cell receptor. In contrast with the B cell receptor, T cell receptor consists of two polypeptide chains, alpha chain and beta chain. Yes, they both consist of two regions, variable region V and constant region C. And they also have transmembrane region and a short tail that span through the cytoplasm of the T cells. Okay, and this is the antigen binding site. Logically, they will bind to antigen which are presented on the surface of the whole cell by MHC.